Yeah. And so, and so by joining the beta program, if you do do that, you have to discriminate between the features that you have available to you that other paid users don't have if that should arise. And also a third level of sort of complication is I'm on a list. They didn't, list. they didn't just give me the beta access. No, 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 you're right. You're right. There is no gifting of it just but directly. You have to get uh, earn it somehow or they- Yeah, uh, I'm on a list, man. It's like crypto for Zoom. <laughs> so you know what I need to do is uh, let's let's figure out how Zoom identifies your user profile, and in my blogging escapades, I'm going to start mentioning you and being on the list for beta access to see if I can actually get Zoom staff to read my web pages talking about us doing all this stuff to like let's give this guy access. Sure. <laughs> Would that be funny? Be through Twitter maybe or something if it gets crazy, I'd be glad to tweet it. You know, I'm on the list. I, I like to say you know, but uh i have like 600 followers so that helps a little bit I've, I've got like 17 people into our mighty networks like mighty mouse cool yeah. yeah you were like the first person to post i forget where it was was it on the eos community forums uh, I, was, I was looking somewhere and i was like dude mark was on it like back it was like in 2018 or something i think it was the community forums the one the the forums that aaron uh yeah oh by the way we need to solve the language translation issues with eos community forums and i've already started to dialogue with aaron cox over that and it's built on discourse oh cool i think i caught a little wind of that for some weird reason i was i was so confused with the name aaron cox about two days ago and i think that may have been the subject but yeah aaron aaron cox's gray mass is eos community forums uh he originally started it yeah, I knew it and I knew it and I knew that all of that. Yes, I didn't know, but your idea is great because what I want is like member Shaw Cruz three weeks ago said he's waiting on things to translate. I want to start translating. So um, what I want to be able to do is use this tool um, as a way to go. Um, will this tool be helpful to us to start translating? And and he Jacques Cruz was saying we're waiting on Fractally to release all their papers, basically. But we we can we can actually start for the fuck of it translating this when we want things. Well, and, the, and the reason does. I brought this up is because yeah. of the uh, feedback from What's China, the that dialogue I had with uh, Pong. Pong, yeah, Pong. Uh, but basically uh, that there's a, um, oh no, hold on. I can't even remember now, but they, in that, that might've been, no, that might've been she. Well, anyways, there was a request to translate some things and part of it was the, those forum websites. And I looked at it and I started just trying to manually translate it, you know, just to have a copy of it readable. But then when I started doing it, I was like, dude, this is a mess because you know how forums are, yeah. you know, you know, it's just, it just, well, let's, it, let's just all the symbols and graphics. That's what really gets troublesome. But just the fact that you have these reply threads and stuff, it's like, you don't really want to try to, you know, cause it's going to evolve and change. It, it could easily evolve and change. Yeah. Let's, so, let's, so, the, so our question to ourselves is, is, you know, Basically, we want the who, what, where, when, and why right now with where we are. Like, what is this? Uh, and 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 that's why we introduced it privately. Take a look at it. But hey, Oscar, what's up? Hey, man, what's up? Howdy, well, Oscar. The, uh, hey, hey, Doc. How you doing? Good. Yeah, basically, um, things are real good because this is going to be like um let's look let's look at what what it is if and how it will help us right now um and uh like for example if someone wants something translated we could say for example well we could proof it with our machine and give it to you probably 75 percent good to go <laughs> and they'd be like they have to learn and then we could be keep talk to Aaron Cox about ESCommunity.org and be like, we have API translation 
systems, but that's not what this is. This is a different thing. This is a manual marketplace for an administrator to wash his documents in machine translation. And since it's a demo uh, or a um, like a, it's like a test account, um, even though I sent that Spanish document to go get finished off by a human, I gave it three days. So in three days, expect that's not going to be finished off by a human because I don't think Ryan turned that function on for, for this test account. Like I can't just go get, I'm not, I, I have fake tokens to pay those guys. So it's never going to get released to anybody. I have a feeling in three days, it's still going to be sitting there with that big old button that says, yeah, go ahead and make me finish this document for whatever much money, whatever. But you know, Ryan's not going to give me the keys to just do all that. He probably told me that, but I, I didn't catch it. But I'm assuming that we don't have that second half of it that would, that would get those people to, to do it. And then they would put it like it's done. And then suddenly I'd have a different icon that says, you know, go, it's, it's good. You want to check it for release? And I look at it and go, oh, okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, release it. But right now this is a learning tool for us to see what, what, what we're like wanting to do. But uh, anyways, are y'all down for a, a quick, like just, just run through it? And get it well, let me, uh, let me go check on my coffee real quick. Yeah, for I sure. Hey, Austin, please, how's your morning? Please do, sir. Uh, good. I haven't, I haven't really started today. I haven't put my coffee in. I don't really drink coffee, so <laughs> it's just an euphemism for for what I do in the mornings. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was somewhere between make coffee and feed Bella, my cat. No, hey. I have to. Uh, what I have to do is release the dog so he can go, you know, do his morning duty that's perfect that's exactly my my uh it was funny because when i said coffee what i kind of meant was attend to the cat immediately <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so now right. i'm wondering um we can tell people that, that we can you know put their their documents to the machine so they can have at least 75 percent of the job done and they can you know, try to finish it on their own. But what I'm thinking is, uh, since we want this, we want to offer this to the ES community, and you're you're already telling us that the Translate Me Network is on Neo, I believe. I don't remember. Um, and they are planning to launch on on ES. Uh, so far, I guess uh, there isn't all all the part with the human translators. And the distribution of tokens, I, I suppose that the part is not ready yet. But that's because... not true. Uh, right now, that uh, chain launched on Neo, N E O, the Neo blockchain. So Neo gave. Them... Uh, yeah, but yeah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, on ES, because someone has to write the contracts and everything. So that part, I guess, is not done. Not done yet. But we have Shakruz, which is a pretty good. Pro programmer or developer and he has he has already offered help with a with a token at least yeah there's a couple things there uh one is um uh, funding um but you know like one is one is funding two is the design of the of the peg um uh three is uh maybe the it's a timeline but in that design of the peg with Chuck Cruz, well, Dwayne is about to also join this. Uh, I haven't been able to connect, but it's a go. So as soon as we connect with Dwayne, um, you know, we can slowly seep this stuff in, into the conversation. And uh, I'm sure he'll say, uh, oh, yeah, I know a lot about token contracts, too. But may maybe, maybe not. It seemed that way. Yeah. Uh, that that also takes me to the other question I had that I wanted to ask you, and is uh, I I would like us to be preparing pitches for running for Eden if you agree with it. Oh yes, thank you so much because funding is kind of the backbone of everything we've been working on for the last year and a half. You know, we said, well, we're going to have an Eden. It's going to be interesting. Uh, maybe people will fund people, and then. It's, it's all getting started, you know? 
and then next thing you know, there was a pomelo. It took a year to, to get together. And then now fractally is a year, year and a half out from being actually on a market, funding us, back funding us for all of our, uh, our value. Who knows what kind of speculative value they're going to place on the uh, respect token or the translation foundation respect token. I, I, I don't know how much, I don't know how, how if people are going to be able to invest in different team tokens as well as the entire respect token but long story short is the whole well i, I look at it like one sixth of this whole thing deals with sustainability through just straight up remunerative like get the get whoever's doing whatever paid so yeah you, i agree i agree because yeah, the you, reason why is is that this tokenization model doesn't feed people doesn't pay the bills and there's a way the level of pay that you want to pay people, you don't want to have to pay them exorbitant amounts and like vesting for the future is there's you're, you're excluding a lot of people that are at that lower pay scale that have excellent language translation abilities, but haven't been vetted. You know what I'm saying? That's Absolutely. what I'm thinking. Absolutely. So translate me has a reputation system for their, for their uh, translators. And now, um, basically the EOS community kind of has a reputation system um, for its kind of for its contributors, uh, a reputation system and funding system. So Translate Me is going to have a reputation system and a funding system for translating. Fractal is going to provide reputation and or accountability and reputation, basically reputation and funding for anybody like Yves LaRose said, he said in one of his two minute rants, he said, anyone who's doing anything for EOS should be getting paid. You know, so he is the big fund guy, but fractally is a speculative potential fund funding machine, basically, uh, you know, and it's like, so we're trying to like dig in and plug into that. And, and Oscar, I think that kind of, I can't remember exactly what your pointed question was, but I think that speaks to what you were saying, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my I was wondering uh, that. Well, I was thinking to myself that we should be, um, you know, getting all the all, all the all the ways done in which we can get funding, because uh, just to maximize to maximize the the possibility of of getting funds, because we don't know. Uh, I think the translate me has already been uh, turned down for Pomelo. I think once. And uh, Eden is coming, and it's not that far away in the future. So we we want maybe to... we should be preparing pitches already. Thank you, thank you. And and it is implied in your in in your vision that um that like I, I want to say you know we we could we could use these funding me mechanisms number one number two is we should be preparing them uh, yeah. now or thinking about preparing them number two and and uh, my, my point is there's many of them there's like three or four and then and then number number four i want to put that is we have very successfully set ourselves up to be rep reputable sufficiently uh like bona fide in other words in other words, what we've done is we kind of put our feet in the ground and the community accepted it. it so so you, you notice every week we go to Fractally, what's happening? We're getting high scores from the community. <laughs> so mm -hmm. in other words, we have the right to ask for money. I, um, I want to chime in here because I think Oscar's touching on a point that I've been focused on and I see a problem possibly um, developing that I want to address. And that has to do with the feedback that, uh, who was it that Oscar that was, uh, remember over last weekend, was it, they had a bunch of Chinese documents translated and they were explaining the problems with Chinese to English and the lack of qualified translators. And I'm like, wait a second, Here's a person who's explaining it to us and they're saying there's a lack of competent translators, but they are a competent translator themselves explaining it to us. And this thing that Ryan had inferred in, in dialogue with the meetings with Jesse, where it really depends a lot on trust of who, because how do you evaluate your translator's job when you can't evaluate it? You have to get someone else, right? 
And so this whole notion of having a respect thing or a metric or whatever, like, I don't understand exactly how it works, but the way I'm thinking about it is that if we could combine what we're doing with like an open source cookie, cookie cutter way where we could partner with educational institutions where we assign the students a job to translate a thing, they have some interface and like the teacher reviews it or something like that. We're to where, you know, you know, it's to where we get it for free and then we can like donate back to the, like for, for participating in this, we're gonna give them something back and maybe we liquidate the tokenization or we get, maybe they don't want tokens. You well, know I, think I don't know how that would work. I, I think what, maybe they just want recognition, you know, just participation okay. and recognition could be enough. Ultimately, they just want like to to express themselves, the your need, their, 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 them themselves on a on a scale that would that would represent who they are. Uh, you know, it would really touch them to be able to to speak to and also to be able to to get. Look at uh, Vicky. Look at Vicky's translation team. Like they have a massive translation team that are all crowdsourced, and none of them are being giving any any payment except recognition. Is what I'm. We're going to fix. Basically, we're going to fold into that beautifully. So anyways, uh, the problem I'm, I'm more concerned about is uh, dealing with the real time needs versus how long will it take to tokenize and get that whole system developed? Because there's going to be a certain amount of funding and, and troubleshooting and investment before we're even going to see the fruit of that. Meanwhile, I love that, Doug, because I'm the latter. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking more at the real time. Like I yeah. want these things done, you know. And so in, in, in that discourse, I put links in the chat to the discourse links that explain where translation is at using Aaron Cox's forum, EOS community forums. What needs to be like, if you went that route without trying to code, um, they have a plugin available now. When I talked to Aaron about this, he said that there wasn't anything available at that time. And I don't think Aaron is really interested in messing with this forum anymore because he's got his Unicode wallet project going on. <clears throat> so it's just something that like if we're going to continue to use this forum for the EOS community and we want to be able to open the uh, language barrier this is a pinch point that someone needs to focus on and I don't think Aaron's gonna have a lot of time to uh, look into it and meanwhile uh, Oscar I don't know if you can see on your screen we have the live uh, captioning process going through yeah, yeah, I have a. I have it's, a it's not anyway. bad. I've noticed it corrects some words in the time we spoke. Like after yeah, but you know what? Word. I also realized. I realized that I think this is only happening when the host. Let me see who the host is. Mark, he's my, got the paid version. Yeah, it's Mark. only through the paid version. Exactly, because I've been trying to do the to to have this working on on the breakout rooms in fractally and. I realized that I hadn't, I couldn't even see the option and I believe it's because of it. It's the, you need a, a paid version as a host. Uh, what is the goal uh, to share your screen, Oscar or something? No, just no, to read I mean the, the, text. the closed captioning. Oh, okay. The live okay. closed captioning. It's not bad to have sometimes uh, for even for an English speaker. It... Okay. Well, next uh, few times we talk, let's play with that. I'll hand you host. And then you could re you either record or 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 put the the subtitles up, because it sounds like if I just make you host, Oscar, you're saying if I just make one of y'all host, you can you can add the the subtitles. You think? Uh, or no, I lose I'm, the capability. Yeah, because we're one of the two. We don't have a paid account. Yeah. All right, noted. So basically, I saw your enterprise uh, plugin platform discourse. And uh, that's great, uh, you know, and, and Aaron Cox, but these are the questions we're answering. These are the problems we're, we're speaking to. Uh, at the kernel level, uh, we're setting up a longer term development, like, uh, uh, like growth um, building, we're building uh, to, uh, to kind of like really etch away at the translation problem uh, that it doesn't come, uh, the solution doesn't come through Google or enterprise costs. The solution will come, I think, through something like, I think this may, this translate me may be able to uh, kind of provide for that. The overall goal is the super low cost, highly integrative and uh, 
and and uh, adaptable. Um, uh, what I'd like to see is a superior model because from what uh, China Eden China is saying is that all of the machine language translation things suck. Yeah, you know, going from Chinese to English. So if we have a tokenized reward setized model that can quickly adapt to all these things and we beat everybody to the punch to where yes. it's superior. That's the game right there. Do you realize how valuable the EOS IO community is to translate me? Because mm -hmm. what we're gonna be able to do is, is, is fix their kernel level into six different ways of fucking around with stuff. Number one, video, we're already doing it. Uh, number two, it's gonna be uh, all these different, like different ways of long form, short term, medium form, eventually into real-time systems practically is going to be actually creating their own video platform and if we can get into with fractally on the translation solution side here down the line I, they don't have rep i don't know how they're going to approach translation other than they're going to point to who's the translation <laughs> foundation can you guys help us because why wouldn't they uh, if we can get our shit together which i, I think we're moving in that direction so uh, the the bees uh, video thing, the Pomelo pitch three, the t if we can token on EOS, hell maybe maybe token on EOS is is not necessarily the I mean, yeah I think that's kind of obvious but that's not necessarily the key I mean uh, maybe token on I'm not really sure uh, how this works um, um, what both token on on eos token also on respect or fractally platform and um and so uh token on on telos eventually token on wax eventually and all that stuff you know where they can like really plug in once we do do get stuff a uh, giant robot built you know and, and we'll just be able to plug in plug in plug in kind of thing once we get it all done from the smart guys because translate me is what we're helping them with is being able to pay attention to that level of detail for integration and development and all that stuff. So Aaron Cox's uh, interest is, is very valuable. It's very high value. Well, he but, knows it's an important issue. Of course, he's going to want to try to address it. But, you know, like I said, I don't know how much time he has to actually roll out any implementations on the forum site. And I think that it was something that he probably started originally through a Pomelo pitch. Um, so I don't know exactly how that all works, you know, like, can he just hand it over to someone else? Does he feel comfortable? And what if somebody, because right now what I'm looking at is just like, because Discourse is like a containerized form solution where they're offering add-ons at a fee versus like implementing something truly open source, you know, that depends on packages where there's no pricing structures. And that kind of, you can't really just, mod, uh, mod, I mean, you could mod the Discourse, but I don't know if that's a good idea because then you're going to have to be supporting it. You know, yeah, and then try to switch from the ground up, like yeah. we're doing. Yeah, and so to so so I don't know if there's a if it's, this implies like switching to a new forum and exporting all the content out and dealing with all the off integration with the Anchor Wallet, or you know if it means just modding this or just paying the fee, or how does it work? You know, I think it's just going to be modded. I think it's just going to be. I don't really know how Aaron's platform. Uh, I'm not really sure what that platform is. Is it really his code or is it discourse? Something? It's the links in the chat. He told me. It's uh, oh, well, he he built the US community. Uh, uh, That's what uh, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, yeah I didn't realize. Yeah, I didn't realize it's the whole discourse. Did, okay, I did not realize the whole platform was 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 basically uh, placed on the discourse platform to use right. as. So uh, he somehow uh, took this discourse thing. And then added the anchor wallet in, in authentication or integration. Oh, cool. Something. All right. All right. Well, Aaron, Aaron Cox has definitely been on our list for uh, about six months, uh, but we're not ready yet. Uh, we, we want to. Uh, I just mainly wanted to know what it was built on so I could start researching it. So because I want to figure out if there's an I-18N, you know, thing. But like I said, it looks like from the links I looked at, they're trying to upsell you. Uh, oh yeah, for uh, sure. It's, 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 could you send the links again because I can't see the the chat history. Okay. Oh no, okay. here they are. No, no, don't yeah. worry. They hurt. Okay. okay. Yeah, and if y'all ever want to break on a demo, I'd be glad to walk through that. But this is really cool to think funding, Oscar. Good, good idea because uh, yeah, uh, Eden um, and uh, Pomelo, and then also the ENF. Um, right now, Jesse is is pitching everything Jesse to the ENF, but everything Jesse includes 
translate me. And and so when when Jesse sends to Eve, hey, this is what Jesse wants. The translation side of it is going to be is going to be uh, uh, folded into that. It's going to be quiet. It's going to be non visible, invisible. And um, and so uh, so that ENF funding should be going straight to Translate Me, which is great. They they need to get legs, and uh, they're going to be developing their pomelo pitch. Well, in the meantime, we have a foundation, not to be confused with Translate Me or or, or what you know uh, the bees are doing. There, it's, it's like but we are the translation center. So, um, so uh, it's like basically to answer the question, yes, it's on for Pomelo, for Eden, and even for the ENF directly, uh, but for also Dan Larimer's fractally. So how, how can we time when we enter each of those? <laughs> well, right now, Eden and Pomelo, I think we're ready for. I don't think we're ready for Eves LaRose and I don't think we're ready for Dan Larimer. So th does that, that's, that answers that basically, doesn't it? Yeah. We're, ready, we're ready for Pomelo and Eden. So build your pitches. Let's collaborate, play around. We'll post this and that. Cause trust me, yes, I'm putting a pitch into Pomelo and, and in Eden, I got kind of like surprised on Eden when I went in there and I said, Hey, um, I'm running on a platform for uh, funding uh, uh, basically uh, myself um, in what I'm doing um for integrating uh solutions to translation to increase the bandwidth and uh, i didn't get to the point where if i if i win and then win again and get a whole shitload of money okay well maybe 75 percent of that is just going to go it depends on my time and stuff because the the goal would be to start back filling my time in with, with a way that's kind of reasonable and over time, so you can, so, so if you get level one, you don't have much money. They give you like a hundred EOS or something like that a month. You're like, I'll take all that <laughs> just to backfill my own time. You get level two, go, well, I'll take, you know, all that level one and then take all the level two and just spread it across things to be able to like mobilize uh, externally uh, to, to incentivize and mobilize externally. So there's a combination between like, getting that Eden money and, and giving it to an organization to keep building or getting that Eden money and giving it to yourself. So we got to find out how we want to, um, how, how we want to kind of, what's our story there and what's, what's a good way to, to start backfilling our funding and, and to fund what we want. Cause, uh, cause I, I don't even know right now what we would want to, to spend that money on maybe i would just put and i'm putting the rest to translate me but here's what happened i got in daniel key's room in my eden session a few months ago daniel keys built uh pomelo okay basically him and eves la rose built pomelo crowdfunding if doug doesn't know yeah. so. he's sitting right there i give him my translate me uh, or my uh, EOS foundation. Hold on. Daniel Keys and Yves LaRose built Pomelo. Pomelo. What about Denis? How does he? The, does and that? Dennis. Okay, Dennis. Okay. Yeah, the lead was Eves basically. And then Eves broke off based on all that stuff we could talk about deeper. And then Daniel took over as CEO. And so he owns Pomelo as of like 50% into the process. And he finished it by 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 just they, it, on schedule practically. It was like was like October November or something. They released uh, and round one. It was September originally. They were like at the end of summer, August September, and then uh, November. There it goes, boom. And then we had a round two in like February or something. And uh, so I'm sitting there with uh, Daniel Keys, and he says, and, and one of this other guy makes a pitch that says, I'm going to give all the money to the crowdsource projects. So here I just said, I'm going to do, I'm going to give all the money to me. This guy says, I'm going to spread it across all, all of your Daniel Key's projects. And Daniel Key goes, okay, so I vote for that guy. <laughs> and I would ask everybody else to vote for that guy too. And everybody else did. And I did. I was like, yeah, okay, cool. So give it away to Pomelo. So that's kind of, I think, more appropriate for Eden money is to spend it across different Pomelo projects rather than uh, spend it, oh, I'm representing the foundation. I'm going to spend all the money on me and the foundation. They're going to like, uh, no, do Pomelo with emphasis on EOS translation. Maybe 50% is going to go into what we're building. 
fifty percent is going to be spread across Pomelo projects. Uh, yeah, I mean that sounds a lot better because if you say exactly, if you say that I'm going to spend the money on me and the translation, that's not exactly very. Uh, it doesn't give you that many points. But if you say that you're going to to put it on Pomelo, that makes a lot a lot more a lot more sense. It's more favorable for you, and. Uh, at the same time, if you have a if you have a project on Pomelo, you can put the money on your project on Pomelo. Now, this there was a there's a uh, let's say uh, ambiguity in would in the rules. Well, the rules were 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 not amb ambiguous. They said clearly that you cannot um, vote or donate to your own project, but they have not been endorsing that 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 rule not in in the first season not in the in the second and they're not going to do it in, in the third either oh, oh, i thought they did do that i thought that they no they didn't they didn't well, we had the, the discussion in the eden in the eden members and a lot of the eden members were putting the the, the money they got from eden to their own project in pomelo and i say i said i was not i was not i mean i did not agree with that because the rules are very clear they say you cannot donate to yourself and uh, eventually, uh, Dan and Daniel came and said, "All right, look, we're not enforcing that rule. We know that it's in there, but we have not been doing anything by that." But what you cannot do is it, that you cannot fund multiple accounts to donate to yourself. You cannot do that. But if it well, is this, one this big reminds that you get of, from from Eden, you can do it. This reminds me of the the whole issue that happened with the hack SX thing and how Yves was able to coordinate a a recollection of those funds um, with no clear consensus model. And so here you have a situation where we have the rules set one way, but then there's an arbitrary judgment to not follow those rules. Should we not change the rules if we're going to be like that? Or what is a consensus mechanism that allows for that variation from the rule set to what we're enacting? I mean, the same principles going on with the bylaws with Eden and the smart contract. Yeah, no, they say, they say that the rules need to be updated, all right? And uh, they need to be clear in that part in which they're not going to, they're not going to be forbidding uh, project owners to donate for themselves as long as it's one, I think it's, it's as long as it is only one, one donation and it's only, it's only coming from you. So in case you got money from Eden, you can put it in there. But that's it. You cannot just go fund all your on your workers, for example, and tell them, all right, go pay, go donate on Pomelo. You cannot do that. Uh, that needs to be updated in the rules. They, they said that, but I don't know why. I, to be honest, I, I felt like it kind of feel it kind of doesn't feel fair, because the way I see it, it, it's Eden members have an advantage over all the other all the other uh, community members. But, you know, I don't know. But things are not gonna work just the way I think or the way I, I want them to. So uh, well, at least we know that that is possible. If we run for Eden, which I think we should, cause all of us, yeah, all of us are Eden members. So that gives us a five, five chances. We'll say one, two, three, four, it's five, eight. exactly. It's amazing. See, th this is, I hadn't thought of this, okay? I hadn't thought about Eden recently at all. And I'm over here kind of blowing my mind because this is a part of one of our team purposes is kind of test fractally and how it helps us manage as a team to leverage kind of our power. <laughs> and next thing you know, we find out all five of us are on Eden and we're about to get a shitload of money, <laughs> basically. And yes, I understand on the subject of the rules. Look, there's two parts to a rule. One is the architecture and the other one is the enforcement. Okay. And and then and then choose your adventure. You either violate the rule or not. If the enforcement's high and, and there's a critical recompense then careful because the risk is high. Because if Daniel could just delete your account, it's, fuck you, you're never going to get on here again, then you're done. You know, so watch out. You don't want to mess that up. That's a high risk. So would I be, uh, would I be, um, uh, basically there's probably a word for it when we get multiple accounts and, and put it on there. Number one, absolutely not. But will we be using 
uh, Ryan uh, from Translate Me will be using all his translators because he says he's got like a donation army. I mean, now that's an extreme way to say it, but he has alluded to, he thinks we can get his community to donate to his Pomelo pitch in Pomelo season three, because season two was a prove out for him. Season one, we missed it because Daniel Keyes would not approve our project as a public good. So season two, we really drilled how to say this is a public good by offering free APIs to the community. Now season three is gonna be, we wanna build on EOS, hopefully we'll get to that point. And oh, by the way, we have an army of, of community translators that now have a map on how to create an EOS account and how to donate one, two, three, four, five EOS. <laughs> so if, if 100 or 200 of those people do that, those guys are gonna make $30,000 that's going to make, that's going to really help them. And if they double that and send half of it to us, oh shit, bar the door. Uh, Daniel Key's going to wake up from his little lair and go, um, what rule of the day do I want to start enforcing? Uh, I'm Daniel Keys. No soup, no soup for you. Cause he did it to me once in season Pomelo one where he would not let our project go forward because it wasn't a public good bullshit. Uh, number two, we drilled it down and I was so happy and realized he's not insane. He's just busy. So season two, he came to terms and said, hey, it's great, great, welcome. I said, oh my God, Daniel, wonderful. Season three is gonna be, now we've got an army of funding people. That's a barrier we need to get through without Daniel throwing down the gauntlet and saying, I don't like it. Arbitrary. It's arbitrary. This is not a DAC. This is that group saying yay or nay on your project and how you're doing business. So this is a risk. We definitely don't want to piss him off. Well, and, and I think we definitely have an established need that is being demonstrated in real time. And so for him to not, you know, because it's, it's beyond just what our needs are with China, Eden or whatever. It's like, this is something that could be universally applied to any anybody who needs a need of language translation and yeah to me that definitely qualifies as a public good uh yeah and also we can ask daniel without giving away the the uh without fucking ourselves up basically we could say hey daniel uh, I, I don't know man maybe not uh maybe just get our army of, of of donators and be like work it out like ask ask for forgiveness once we've unjustly been pointed at and saying you're trying to game the pomelo system no 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 we're not uh we've got crowds that are very interested in donating well the the thing the real interesting thing will be when uh jesse is comfortable okay. pitching what we got going on to the enf and the feedback eaves you know or the, if the, they get funding or not because that will sort of set the road or the path open the doorway or you know reveal what objections that have to be overcome agree it's going to make it sound really mysterious who is this what is this amazing translation stuff that's brewing and we're going to be like it's us when when it finally comes out into the visual picture it's not going to be translate me it's not going to be jesse well yeah i mean honestly i i feel the same way like if we didn't take the role that we did i don't know if this dialogue would even be happening the way it has at all you know no way do you remember jesse emphatically thanking me that first meeting saying thank you yeah. actually by the way don't forget i brought this before jesse six months prior Right. And, and I have it on Telegram. I don't like it. No, no, I'm out. Okay, that's cool. I Look, I'm just putting feelers out, but that's cool. He's busy, basically. He had the Eden thing. And then six months later, I say, look, man, I really, really, really. And he goes, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. And at the end of that meeting, he says, uh, thank you so much, Mark. I said, my pleasure. And then Ryan and I talk right after that meeting and Ryan sits there with Rob Neat, his chief technology officer. And he looks at me and it's a moment of silence. He says, Mark, I don't know how you do it, but everything you touch turns to magic. And he says, we could never, ever have gotten before a group like this and let them take us seriously. Fuck no, man.
Well, that's a shame, but I'm, that's a, it's a shame that that's the case, but it's a blessing that you took the actions that you did to make that happen. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a evidence of like the way the value spectrum is applied is mysterious. And suddenly I'm like, yeah, okay, noted. Thank very sub you. subjective, I would say. Yeah. It's very subjective. And I'm kind of blown away by, thank you, Jesse, holy cow. And next thing you know, I'm like, okay, thank you, Ryan. This is great. Uh, uh, let's keep doing what we're doing because uh, so that's, that's again, that's very mysterious. And uh, what, why do I care? Because all I want to do is listen to songs by the fucking Chinese at 3 a.m. and be like, huh, nice. you know, because we don't have that dialogue. We don't have any flow I, from the beginning. This is four years. We were never able just to sit here and just flow with the major groups because of language barriers. And three years ago, Rob uh, from uh, Everything EOS came out and literally said, I've been pointedly meeting with the Chinese. It turns out guys, this language thing is everything. <laughs> and I was like, that's what I'm saying, man. And, and it ruined EOS, I think. I think if we'd have had the language piece fixed before, which there's no way you could do that because we're just learning, but uh, then um, I think e e the, uh, the, the flow and the dialogues across the uh, kind of globe uh, would, have, would have actually had EOS uh, defeat Ethereum. So um, I have another topic uh, that is unrelated to what we've been discussing involving the teams on Fractally and Dwayne and myself and uh, Fractally in Orbit. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that now or if it's interesting to you. Well, uh, sure. What do you think, Oscar? I, yeah, I, have... I mean, I haven't really, I haven't really investigated them, to be honest. Oh, and, Fractally in Orbit? He's done much. Yeah. What? I know I, I was in in the same break room with one of them. Uh, I don't remember who who that was, but he was talking to us about that. But he didn't he didn't give any any details. He did he didn't dive into it, I, so I can really tell. All I know is that I went to the to the to the web page they have, and this it was something about blocking on a satellite, something like that. So I'm sure Doc can tell us a lot more about that. Yeah, well, uh, all I can say is it, the, that group and my participation and dialogue within it um, has been very um, exciting for me. And um, even though like I'm pretty new to this ecosystem, I've been able to contribute a lot of you know valued ideas and, and dialogue in the in that uh, process. The last Friday, where which is when the, the team has been meeting the only two people that showed up were myself and stan larimer um the reason for that was i think the consensus that's who i was with what's that and that's who i was with i didn't know that stan i mean i for sure it, it, it it's very noticeable that he has the same surname as dan oh, yeah. as daniel larimer but i yeah. didn't know they were they were siblings they were brothers no, no, no dad out in there it's his father. Stan is, is Dan's father. So I said he was his brother. No, his father. Oh, then yeah, I must have heard, is, I must is, have heard it wrong then. Stan is his father and Stan created BEOS, B E O S, which is basically uh, a, uh, a, a token for, for like space. Yeah, and, that I know. Okay. Okay. You know, okay. Got it. Now he's piggybacking on fractally to, to continue to work on BEOS. So what's happening over there is something of a, of a potentially monumental scale because the recognition of what they're doing driven as a purely private enterprise versus the ideas I interjected about a public private partnership um, were well received. And so it's sort of like this kind of thing to where uh, what what their initial focus on is essentially uh, becoming a blockchain producer in outer space. But the reality is, is the full vision and picture of what we're trying to accomplish may involve many moving pieces and parts um, in integrating uh, nonprofits, of which Samara, who is a friend of mine who I brought into the Fractally process, has been very eagerly, um, she has been participating with the uh, practically Norbert meetings, even though she doesn't go to the weekly uh, stand-up meetings. And so 
like both her and I on paper are not team members, um, but we are both actively and eagerly attending those meetings when we can and participating. So uh, I was thinking, um, I still want to continue on with whatever role I'm playing here, but I was thinking about suggesting the idea that I move teams just to see how that process works. Because it's sort of like, I, as much time as I've spent on this team to address whatever things come up, I'm the same way with the Fractally in Orbit team and probably as active or more active as a member there than, you know, than some of the other team members. Yeah, uh, I would encourage it because um, then you can actually walk through. Right now, it's kind of boring on some level because this is all prototype pre-prototype so it's it's just like i don't care because nothing's fixed so you would just be helping fractally by walking through that process um and uh, it's a 20-week thing um and then would you be funded through that 20 weeks and suddenly stop funding and then be funding the practicing organ then i think so oh uh, leaf is calling me i'm gonna let that go all right so um so then, I mean, I guess part of the reason I brought that up is because we've gotten Oscar on the team now, and if Dwayne's coming on, we're not going to have to worry about our four-person minimum, you know, to keep the team alive. But at the same time, um, I, I don't want to. I like Dwayne. I've actually wanted to sort of like get to know Dwayne better and collaborate with him. I have no idea on his whole entire background, so it's not like in any way, shape, or form I'm planning on abandoning. Uh, this team, but I uh, just trying to figure out, you know, what makes sense. And I just, you know, to me, it's sort of like funny because, you know, the, the concern about people like participating on a team and then leaving the team or participating on two teams. I know there's been a little bit of dialogue about it, but the primary thing I heard was they don't want someone like that's, uh, you know, like going to start something and not commit to it you know, or, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. And I'm just like, it's sort of silly to me because it's like, here I am just plugging away at everything I can to the best of my ability. And if I get respect for it or not, or I'm a team, I don't even care. You know, this like- yeah, but Also to be, to be a little fair, it's like uh, the first teams that are, that are forming, like one we, this one that we're in, it's like one of the first ones. And then after that, of course, there are going to be more and more teams appearing and popping up. Right. And of course, maybe you want to maybe you want to join the first one of the first teams that appear because it, it's interesting to you. But then another one comes and, and it's established with a, a topic that is a lot more 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 like you than you are more into. So I think it's bound to happen that people from the from the first teams move forward to to the teams they actually want to be in because they're in love with it with the topic. So I think that is normal. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really chase or perceive people for moving from one team to to the other. It it only means that they want to keep collaborating. So and keep contributing. And since like you say, you, you, you don't really have to be an, an official on paper team member to be contributing to, to a, a goal, to something that you, that you think is pursuable and that should be pursued. So I don't really see any problem. I, like Mark said, I, I would also encourage it. Cool. Well, I just wondering, and I don't, like I said, I don't really care, but if there's like a 20 week sit out period then I won't be accruing ex any res team respect for that downtime, which, like I said, doesn't bother me. Um, I just think it's it's something that I, I I just having to deal with these kinds of uh, anomalous situations. Well, you know, care, if you're worried, see if if it, if it bothers us, it, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it bothers Mark, and I don't think it's going to bother any of the, of the others. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm more interested in this muddy way that we feel because this is fractally they literally have created a 20 week i think it's it's weak i think their design is a bit weak i think the problem is a bit difficult to create an incentive uh, geometry of incentive that that, that, uh, to, that accommodates for uh, say multiple interests like being on two teams in one fractal uh, to switch from one to another or, or quit a team 
or come onto a team. So coming on is easy. Quitting is easy. Then there's this 20 week thing. That's a disincentive. Okay. And that design ends right there. And you're like, okay, well, that doesn't sound very sophisticated, but sure. We'll roll with it. Well, meantime, if episode one is Doug's thinking about fracting and orbit and now Doug's in disarray because he's like, man, and now their play of putting 20 week in is actually being effective right now. And it's inspiring us to go, um, um, well, let's see, um, uh, and have like a good pause to give pause to a good, a good question of what are we doing? What should we be, could we be doing or more or less, um, like, it gives us pause to be able to think about at least I think it's integral to how teams form integrity forms uh, leverage forms. They're trying to get something where, well, if, if it's going to be like say lukewarm on a team, then the team will suffer. So they're going to say, well, don't make it lukewarm, make it all in or not. You got a 20 week thing. And I'm going, okay, gotcha. I see what you're trying to do there. Interesting. And I don't know how it plays into the way we're architecting our team uh, because we're a come and go kind of thing. And, and it's supposed to be very flow. I told Dan Larimer yesterday on that frankly thing, I said, I don't think we need to add an enormous amount of mass to this decision about a logo. I vote yes. I don't think we need to sit here and do web 2.0. We need to think about it for a week. <laughs> Just let the consensus roll, man. Yes, uh, the, the thing's fine. We can undo it just like Seymour said, but don't let things get in the way according to the bureaucratic model. Uh, so I don't know if this 20 week is valid. I think yeah, Doug, that's, could, that's I, think Doug I think Doug could come and go and do things and everybody be okay, but I don't know. I don't know if there's a functional team integrity slash if you want to, then you're going to need to commit over time. And I don't know about this hyper binding thing that we're talking about. I, I, I'm suspect on that, but that's well, what wasn't there talk about being able to participate on two teams also because if you know, two different fractals. Yeah. And so, because the thing is, it's like, you got to also understand this logo thing. I don't know if you guys caught this, how it all started, but basically Douglas Butner of all people, you know, his t-shirts. Did you see that post? Tank tops. And did you see my reply to it? Tank tops. Huh? Tank tops. Oh yeah. Yeah. But did you see my reply to it? Cause I immediately brought up all these legal concerns you know, oh. like of the trademarking and branding. I was the one who immediately shot Douglas Butner's, thing down like have you thought about this have you discussed uh, this how is this handled wow cool when I, when I did that that's how that's what dan responded with because i pushed i i douglas got up there and got on his soapbox and criticized and then i and then or not criticized but suggested to innovate in this way and then i said wait hold on here douglas i want to know how are these questions going to be answered and i brought up some serious concerns that douglas did not even if he thought about, he didn't try addressing before by communicating with Dan or the factory team officially. He just well, went off on his own and did this thing. And so when I responded to that, it took the factory team less than a, two weeks. Maybe it was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. What happened yeah. yesterday blew my mind. You know, and so now it's the same thing could happen with this. I mean, potentially, if there was more people and, you know, like yeah. this whole thing about the team in 20 weeks, two teams, like, wait yeah. a second. You know, like, does this make sense? You know, yeah, I, I think that that was so crazy that we did an on the fly, uh, like uh, just a, a quick early check, early exploratory kind of uh, test for 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 what we know already. And Dan Larimer ran the whole show. And then next thing you know, we have six people up there going, I vote yes. I, vote yes. I was like, wow, cool. We can do consensus on the fly. And um uh, and you know it's based on a, a real use case. Uh, your 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 good input on the uh, logos or the uh... here here is what I wrote. If you want, I just said the Telegram chat. I can read it. Sure. Not... I let everybody can share screen also. Basically, because uh, 
Douglas puts his little all his links over the mugs and the shirts and the hats and the logo and the branding. And then uh, that was at 11:44 a.m. And then at 1:50 p.m., I write, "Oh, just wondering now, isn't Fractally Incorporated as an LLC? And regardless if they are or not, don't they have to agree, allow, or you?" your use of their possibly trademarked or copywritten property? Or are you surrendering your creative talents and assets with no clear expectation in an agreement? Because basically what I'm saying is you're using their branded stuff to sell, you know, can you just do that? You know, or are you just saying here, I made all this stuff for you, you sell it <laughs> and then make the money on it? Hey, I lower your microphone if possible, Doug. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get to that screen. I saw it. I saw that too. I thought, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, um, it's a good concern because he kind of felt like that. It's like, um, yeah, you're making money and there might be a brand. So maybe, maybe you should, you know, you have to also remember Douglas Butner is one of the most, uh, critical and vitriolic people who wants to now brand practically, you know, so for, for Dan to allow him to do that is creating a huge liability or risk at this early stage. That's the way I look at it. That's a, I can't hear you, man. <laughs> that's a neat way to look at it, Doug. I did. I can hear you. It's funny because Doug's volume went way down and Oscar's went way up, <laughs> but I'm good. It's, it's okay. I, we're accommodating. That's that's pretty low, Doug. Okay, I, I just turned I turned off the automatically adjust and I have it all the way up right now. That's good enough. But anyways, I asked about them about what are, are the revenue streams or budget, capital budgets disclosed? How will they be used? Are decisions made based on a two-third consensus vote or through the governance structures inherent to the respective forms of organizations in which they participate? In this case, a corporate form of LLC. And so anyways, I, I put all that and it just goes silent. And of course, nobody responds to any of it in the chat, but then Dan Larimer has this big talk at the uh, last meeting. So did, you at Dan, did you at Dan Larimer at all on that? No, but he obviously caught it. So yeah, was, right on. Yeah. Was like June second, so that was what less than two weeks ago. Hey, before we leave this conversation, I do want to go through a demo uh, to speak to you, Doug. When you asked, do we want to? You want to go on this new? Subject? I would like to run through that demo. Yeah, yeah. Do well, it that's really. here. That's what we're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Please do okay. so. Yeah, I'll share screen. Um, so I'm sharing screen starting right. Right now, you guys can see my screen. Hell yeah. Okay, cool. So basically, um, here we go, ready? That's the uh, test account. Uh, so basically I can give you that username and password if y'all like, I would just only ask that you express your interest in getting it so that I kind of, we kind of keep it sane. I didn't just want to publish it. Yeah. Um, so you can do that now. Would you guys like the username and, well, let's just wait. You might not. Yeah, so I don't anyway, so, so right now I got, these are my documents. Okay. And I only have one test account. This is it. So here's all the documents. And this was the one that Ryan dem demonstrated to me. And this is the one that I made yesterday. Can you guys all see that in my yeah. cursor? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So yesterday, so I'm going to do the same thing I did yesterday. As see, you can see yesterday, I, I did that. You see how it's got all the Chinese and the French? And um, so they have a separate for a uh, simplified and. A yeah, they did. And I don't know how effective it is. We'll ask Pong once we're ready to publish this. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm saying? Right. Do you yes. guys, do you know what I'm saying about Pong? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, in my head it was punch, but yeah. Okay, punch. Okay, I'm not sure. We, we could, event, we're getting to know him. He's very valuable. Um, so basically, uh, I'm curious that question because this has traditional, uh, simplified, traditional, and it's also got a third. Uh, there's a third Chinese in here somewhere. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. This is it right here. This is ZH is just Chinese. I don't know the difference between that, this, and this. So you all caught all that? Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so then we'll start a brand new document. We'll basically do this. I say, uh, um, this thing right here is Earthman test one. Let's do Earthman test two. Um, I'm going to select languages, so I'm going to say That's eight, um, we need GER and uh, Vietnamese. All right, and now I'm gonna go to get a blurb. Does anybody have a good blurb we would want to use for a good test number two? What would be a good thing to translate? I looked, I looked here, I didn't see anything. Mm. I, I don't really, um, I, I did the mission statement. Oh, you know what would be good? is the hive post that dan just made on the new blockchain you know oh my god i love that about? i yeah, do that's the I latest do. cutting edge news right there that would be a fascinating interest to the global community And let me see if I can locate it too. Um. Fuck, I hate this fucking. You know the easy way I find stuff of Dan's? I'll show you my trick. <sighs> Here, uh, let me put it in the chat. I just entered on the chat. Okay. But uh, when I can't find Dan's post, you just go to slash or at at Dan, like Hive blog at Dan or. Email. Oh really? Oh, yeah, because cool. he's like the first user on. This I know. Oh yeah, I knew that. I knew, I just didn't realize you could do that. Uh, Hive blog slash at, uh, slash Dan. <laughs> No, at Dan slash at Dan. I have an ecency slash at Dan right now. And oh my god, that's awesome! Thanks, bro. All right. Um, so by the way, this is better. Do you see what I'm circling here? That's better than yeah. that. that, that oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's better than that black and white shit that we saw yesterday. Well, he they, they posted uh, the, both of them, I guess. And you oh, know, that, that, I've been already reusing that logo without their permission, and I've been posting on it, and no one, no one ever gives me any feedback. I'm asking, is this acceptable use? It's like crickets. It's just like the same thing with Douglas Butner. It's like they just sit there and think about it and <laughs> maybe respond to it later. All right. So, uh, so here we go. Um, so now here's a good, this is a good demonstration, guys. Okay, we'll keep that there. Um, it does not do, it does not do uh, images, okay? Good to know. So um, it looks like that's it. So we're gonna put the source link in there too. So so people can click on the original site if they want to. The source, oh, good, good, thank you. So this, yeah. 
All right. That's actually something that uh, Marco I noticed does is on his own post, he puts source and then the link back to the page that it's on. So that way, if someone copy and pastes it, they can actually go to the source. Okay, so I don't know how to do the source link because all this is about to get translated. Oh, well, uh, source links should probably like, for example, will it see where it says go fractally.com and it's underlined with our hyperlink? Yes. So what, what, so what I'm thinking is that that won't be translated and neither will the link or else it wouldn't work. Well, uh, I don't know. No, but remember, well, we don't know what the machine does, but there is a person behind it. So that person may be able to look at the original and the translated not, not version. This part, not this part though, right? This is all machine translation right here. But GoFractly should link to GoFractly. I think you should just put it at the bottom just type source and then post the link and then and then highlight it and make it a link. No, I mean, yeah, th this is going to be done by by the machine, but the human translator m should be able to see both the original and the result because they need to correct. I'll tell you what I'll, I'll do. How would they correct if, it, if they are not able to see the original? Right. Like that, like what I just did in the Zoom chat. Just copy. You can if you see what I but you can just copy and paste what I did in the Zoom, and it might be easier for your mic. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right, that's done. Okay, you understand what I did just then? Yes. All right, good. Yeah. Okay, so so what else? Now this is limited to ten languages right now. Obviously, uh, unfortunate. Oh, oh, okay, guys, this is cool. Um, I'm gonna. I want to. I want to circle back. Let's stay on track here. But I want to. I want to make sure I tell y'all that Translate Me has just made a really really cool partnership that takes their thirty language models and makes it 120. So good multiplier. Well, does that mean that they have a team of people for each of the other 90 languages that are vetted to act as human translators? Um, or that has, does that have to be built? Right now, uh, it is unknown how it's gonna integrate to the token model or the reputation system. Actually, you know what? I, I can answer that. That's just the machine. That's right. not the human. So right. nothing, has, nothing has changed for the human. Right, that's what I would expect. And you know what the other interesting thing is, is that you're limited to 10 languages. What's to say that the software I use, Lingo Blaster, is no different than the same, uh, I mean, the 10 languages limitation is, is like a common, this is like, see this again. So maybe that's how these APIs work. Cause it could just be- well, Actually, I was gonna ask if this is, is this 10 language limit because of the, of the test account you have or is it common to all accounts? It's because of a, uh, of a, uh, a template for their test accounts. So it can be changed at any time. If I ask Ryan, hey, Ryan, we want to actually use this right now. We've looked at it. It's exciting. We want to use the machine across more languages. Are you able to uh, uh, change that 10 value to your 30 or now your new 120? Because we're ready to start proofing and sending. I don't know if that's the case, but so does that answer your question? I'd be yeah, I guess so. hear what he says because I, I wouldn't be surprised if he says it's limited to 10. No, no, he's already told me he oh, can he change has? that. Okay. All yeah. Right, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. They own this entirely. So, okay. Y'all ready? Yeah. Anything else yes. you want to add to this? This is a title Earthman test too. I'm going to submit this. Okay. So then, so then after we, we get this set up, we just, whatever, we hit submit. Everybody see Earthman test two. We got similar, we got all the same languages just in a different order. 
I don't know what this does. It says view. I'll, I'll just click it. Oh, that's the original. So we're going to go back. Um, now I'm going to open this down and you guys get the idea you're starting to. That's listed the 10 languages. So we're going we're gonna to do Spanish now. Here's a link I could send to you. That answers your question in the chat from this morning, Oscar. You go, is there a web page or a, a well, link? Send, send a link then because there's a require yeah. authentication for us to view. Actually, if you're okay with it. Uh... Can you put that in the Zoom chat? Okay. Because I also thought I also thought that you could like upload PDF or TXT versions of the documents. So I thought maybe you were sending documents and then receiving a document back. Like for example, you have an, an SRT file and you want to put it through the machine so you would upload the SRT file directly. But from what I'm seeing, I guess you have to copy all the content from the SRT file and upload it like that. Um, yes, we're getting close, uh, Oscar. This is why I wanted to demo it. I think, I think, can y'all, can y'all access this? I'm trying right now. Let's see. Yeah, it's in Spanish. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. Do I need to put HTTPS? No, no. Okay. So I'll just get out of there then. So that link works. Uh, but, but Oscar, I think I understood your question, meaning, yes, you actually have to create that. So I think that work. Okay. Okay. Great. So so when now when I do it, um, I uh, I think I just hit this. I'll hit it again. Um, oh, I know. Hey, look, guys, see this right here? There's no computer icon, but I'm going to refresh this screen right now. I see an icon. Um, uh, yeah, but I don't. So, so watch my screen for a second. See this link? There's yeah. no icon there, but if I refresh this. Oh, interesting. Uh, when, when Marco clicked on the link, he did not get to see what we saw. All right, so I want you all to see. I just opened up this. Okay, screen. now I see it translated in a PC icon, which was not displayed there. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, if I do this, uh, say on the Spanish, like, um, like I did on my first test here, and I created for Spanish. I I did this dollar sign. I sent it out. Uh, I sent that job out. Well, once those people do the uh, do the job, they're going to send it back. And I think I'll have an icon here that says uh, human. So it'll be machine and human. Right now, it's only um, machine. Uh, I have a question that you could forward to Ryan. Um, is it possible to create a, a test account for the other end, for the, for the human translator? So I can have one and I can, we can prove this. Yeah, no, I agree with what Oscar's saying. I understand where he's coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's knock that out. Because uh, Oscar, I think the thing that we have to be concerned about is people saying they're doing translation work and going through the motions of it, but the quality of it is poor and they're still getting compensated. Anybody know how to hide this, uh, the screen share shit? It's just completely taken over my screen, haha. -ha. <laughs> well, I'll stop share. Anyway, I'll, I'll send to Ryan now just to get that off our plate. Um, Human test account trans, uh, for translating. That's a, a, I'm glad, Oscar, that you're here asking these questions because your background with the bees and just thinking about this is, is great. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very concerned, for, except, for example, with the bees. I know the bees in, in in Spanish, they do a lot of the, I mean, all the bases do translation, but I, I can't really tell for their accuracy because I have to, for example, in the Spanish hive, I, I am always reviewing and correcting their translating, the, their translation, because I know they're using other services. And uh, I mean, it, it's, it's, I'm not saying it's bad, all right? I do it too. I, I also use deep, deep, deepl.com, but what what they do sometimes is that they don't read what they are putting, what they are copy and pasting. 
and sometimes you get to read to to contextualize and interpret what when you're when you're writing okay and what I, what I would be concerned is that uh, for, but of course I, I guess this hasn't happened because there is a reputation system in the trust me network but I would be concerned if people just copy and pasting uh, translation from another source yep 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 I'm just finishing this email real quick. Um, so I've just basically said, are you able to grant us a, hu a quote human translator, all caps test account so we can walk through that side of the marketplace. All right, boom, that's done. Why is uh, Marco able to open the page? I wonder, did you see that? No, I didn't. Let's look here. I'm going to share again. Uh, going to zoom. Going to you tried to click on the same link you sent and got a login screen. Oh, he probably. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was wondering if it had to do with the missing, uh, no, the uh, the private group. I mean, I try, I try it again. No, it has nothing to do because I tried again and clicked in there, and I can see the the article from my end. I know that's what I'm saying. I can see it. You can see it, Oscar. But why can't Marco? <laughs> this is sort of weird. Oh, uh, do you guys want to see my unauthorized use of fractal logo branding that I did not get permission over and no one's complained so far? You probably have. Oh, it got approved anyway, so <laughs> you have nothing to worry about. Well, and people I... were concerned over more important things like why are we discussing and finding consensus over the logo? Know, no, one, no one really expressed their uh, unwillingness to have that logo so yeah let's just say yeah yeah right okay oh by the way i have stock ticker or uh what do you call it um crypto tickers on my web pages now showing the real-time prices of um certain chains but i realize that not all not all the eos io chains are available so i have to bug the dev yeah, I like this. I like this. What you said, Doug. Added HTTPS. Please try again. I don't want to bother Ryan with that because uh, uh, I think it's just a simple technicality. But let's find out if it's yeah. real. But well, uh, it could be IP based. You know, maybe it's restricted. Yeah. To certain IP yeah. Yeah. Based. Yeah. Good one. Let's let's do a little bit digging on that. It's uh, thanks, Marco, though, for chiming in immediately. Whoops, I didn't put me in the post cut there. All right, so um, so uh, getting through this, um, uh, we basically um, are here. So let's let's look real quick at this machine translated version. So you guys, oops. Oh, that's the Uzbekistan. Okay, so, all right. So let me ask you this, um, Oscar. How did the, this look? Did you ever scan through reading it for quality? Is it eighty percent? We have to compare the source to the. Uh, uh, there was a couple of words in there. So, what percent complete translation do you think this would be if you had to put a number on it? Ninety-five percent. I'm going to get a copy refill while you guys are looking at that. So 
So are you looking through it now, Oscar? Okay, Oscar, you still on? Okay, I can't hear you, so you may be muted. I think I heard a little bit of static just now from your mic. I haven't heard anything from you in the last 60 uh, seconds. Uh, okay, you're back. You're back. Okay. Um, there is something right next to the word, to the to the hyperlink that says go fractally. It says I R fractally in quote marks. I don't know where the I Oh, yeah. No, the thing is that it translated a couple of words that should not be translated. But uh, other than that, it, it's fine. This is why a human translator would would do well, because in a in a normal in a normal scenario, this should be translated because this says go fractally, right? So mm -hmm. this should be should be translated in in a normal scenario. But since it is like a like a brand like a brand thing like a brand phrase or motto, I don't know how to call it. Uh, this should not be translated in this context. So this is not. This isn't really a machine, let's say, flaw or, or mistake. Uh, the machine is doing it right. The human, the human work should, would be to contextualize the, the phrase in this case. Yeah, and so we've just validated the absolute need for the human finishing because they're not going to be able to make that determination. Look at the source. It says Fuente, but they say for all dot bombs... They, but they say for all dot coms, don't touch it. So the, the way that program is written is for all dot coms, leave it the way it's written. But that doesn't mean for all hyperlinks because they did change yeah, the word. If that were exactly the word Fuente should stay the same, but with an S at the end because it's sources. Oh, I just put S O U C E though. I only put, so let's look at the original. It shouldn't okay? be plural, it should be singular. That's right. Um, no, but in Spanish, it should be plural. It should say Fuentes. Well, well oh, guys, really? guys, okay. guys well, I'm going to view the original document. See, that's singular. But, but see, see, Oscar's touching on the linguistic translation thing that you're not understand that we're maybe not getting, is that the convention in Spanish is when you refer to a source, you use a plural word. Is that correct, Oscar? In, in this case, yeah. Okay. I mean, languages yeah, are very, very, very complicated. This is a thing that, that you see, I had a, a very good professor that would always tell me languages have a lot of rules, but they also have thousands of exceptions to those rules. Right. So sometimes it's just a matter of seeing something and finding it natural. Well, of course, there there must be a, a rule written somewhere about that that I just don't know. And believe me, in me Spanish in, is not not easy. It's not simple. Let me add into this complica complication with just one language. This is and the thing, the topic I'm going to bring up is universal to all languages. Is when do you translate and when do you not translate? Like for example, when you come across .dot coms or hyperlinks, any kind of translation is going to obviously break the link. So obviously they exclude from translations anything that's an actual hyperlink. But along with that, do you translate Mark Shear or EOS to a Chinese word or do you leave it in English? And so this is the issue with proper nouns and proper names is that proper nouns and proper names cannot always be translated unless there is an officially accepted translation of it. And so you'll see in many of these documents in Chinese, for example, you have words in English in there that aren't translated because you don't want to translate EOS to Chinese unless there's an official name in Chinese yeah, no. that's accepted. You know that. that you don't do that. US. You don't do that in, in Spanish either. Right. You leave you leave some certain words that are exactly. uh, proper names. You leave them the same way. Right. And so, so the language. But by the way, by this, I want to tell you that I Mark Mark should know this because it's it's from older days. Uh, ES Canada made a, a like sort kind of like a like a glossary of terms back in the day about EOS. It's called the, the ABC of EOS. Yeah, it, it, it had been taken. It's taken down now. But I I talked to to the guys about about that a, a while ago, and they said to me, okay, uh, 
like a like a saved page and uh, and then in the file that I haven't really uh, that I haven't really taken a look at, but it's like like a glossary of terms about EUs. I and would like I to find this that. very very interesting because you can tell translators to go there and to check, and we can have uh, words in there that, for example, should or should not be translated, and yes. say, all right, yes. this is this is the 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 sort of like start standardizing the, the translation for humans because some words like for example testnet this is it is completely translatable to spanish it's a right um, a test network or something like that right but what i'm saying is that sometimes that should not be translated for, for static, uh, static hey, yeah, put and, that on the can you put that on the notion page to uh to, to resuscitate that for the future because yeah we're going to want to See, have that as a tool for uh, some is, rules for this is uh, exactly track. what I'm talking about uh, that it. Oscar's touching on is the word test net. For example, you can transliterate test and net, like make a word for test and make a word for net. But in the Spanish language, for example, there's enough developers who have, there's a new Spanish word for test net. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so yeah exactly. the, same, the hey. same principle happens with technology where there's all these technologically sophisticated words, but there's no, equal translation into that language target language until they derive one and agree upon it but that is a process of consensus that is beyond just us um my connection is uh, spotty not like oscar's connection is spotty hey fellas i got a blaze all righty well this is been uh, good this has been great. Uh, yeah, thanks. And by the way, here's the job. It does this. You put three hours, submit for translation, and now that job's... Uh, Why did you put three hours? What does that three hours represent? That, that's the timeline, the deadline. Oh. Yeah, and, and they, they have this many words. Is, is, they'll get paid for 204,600 uh, characters. Does the payment increase if the deadline is shorter or longer? I don't think so. So it's a good question, but I do, I did want to go over that real quick. So I'm glad you caught it, Doug, but I really do got a blaze. Cause I uh, oopsied on like, I got to go like yesterday. All right. All right. We'll take it. Take <laughs> I'm going to hand you host uh, in case you and Oscar want to continue. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put, screw around and see if the captioning still works once you do. All that. right, cool. So I'll say make you, Oh, let, let me, let's, because we recorded this meeting, you know, I want to, I don't want to fuck it up. So let's, uh, uh, end, let's end, end and then, then, and then yeah, start they, again. Yeah. That way it'll, the, that recording will get clipped off. Cool. Just try to quick turn it.